Well, good morning, guys. Today is the big day. We're taking our houseboat, houseboat. Houseboat. On the water today, we're gonna take it for its maiden voyage. We're gonna set sail, we're gonna, well, there's no sail. There's no motor, actually. How did I overlook the motor? Huh, well, there's some things we're gonna button up beforehand. We don't have that many days left of summer. Well, it's not even summer, it's still fall, but uh, we got an early blast of snow. Hopefully there's actually water. Maiden voyage slash overnight slash possibly catch and cook if I can catch something in the lake we're gonna go to. But first, we gotta button up some of the uh, odds and sods, the old punch list, the stuff that never got done. And first and foremost is uh, propulsion, which would be a motor. But if you're just joining us, we built a houseboat out of an old little boat. We put a cap on it. We uh, added some really cool features to make it a little more luxurious, like you know, lighting and bedding and a heating source and power source and all sorts of crazy stuff. My current plan for my propulsion of my boat is this. I started off with this. I was at uh, a thrift store and they had this thing laying around. Uh, it was a couple of bucks. Actually, I think it was 10 bucks. Anyways, it's a, uh, it's a prop from a boat, I can only assume. It says Michigan J275. So my plan is to put it on a rod, a threaded rod, and then, uh, you know, double nut, lock it in place, and then, uh, you know, either mash the thread so it doesn't come off or weld it. I got us a couple of uh, half inch to three quarter inch copper pipes. And what I'm gonna do is put two nuts and the reason why I'm using this is because it doesn't quite, it doesn't quite fit in there. So that'll center it. And then the nut goes inside the copper pipe pretty good. That might work there. And then I'll put a locking pin on the end of that. I don't know. Is that the right way to do the propeller? Well, I thought that was going to be, I thought that was going to be harder to do. There you go. Propeller. I just got to mount that to see the boat. They hook up like a like a rod to like a V8 engine and the V8 engine sitting in the boat and they just like stick the rod in the thing and it just goes wham and it just like the boat just takes off. All right, she's all loaded. She's strapped down. I got one strap on it. Pretty solid there. You know that saying where it's better to know somebody that owns a boat than to own a boat? I'm beginning to really understand what that saying means because they just show up in the boats in the water. Make the most of it. Carpe diem. All right, just at the grocery store, gonna pick up some supplies for the overnight. I'm thinking some bacon, because everything goes well with bacon. What's that? Pretzels and chocolate? Absolutely. $29. Well, we're here. We're at our private fishing hole. It looks like there's a little bit of ice and the water level is really low, but uh, I think it'll work. It's probably got to break some ice and float around a little bit. Figure a way to get the boat in the water. Nice and quiet anyways. Let's uh, see if there's a good spot to get this thing in. Maybe right here. There's a rock that does not want me to go.
I don't think you can get it further in the water than that. All right, we got it at the water's edge. I think I'll take the opportunity and I'm gonna put the outriggers on because uh, the well, ice is not that thick. I'll be able to break through it and uh, I'll, be, I'll be laughing. I'll just slide over there to open water on the other side. I think it'll all be good, but I don't want to, I don't want to have to try to put the outriggers on afterwards. See, outrigger. And then we just, they just flip in place like this. If I didn't bend them, try to move that rock. Ice is not safe. Let's see. I've got everything I own in this little boat. Hopefully, hopefully it doesn't sink. Cause uh, yeah, that would uh, that'd be bad news. Bad news, bears. It's uh, you can see here I'm in the boat. You can see what I'm dealing with. There is ice about that thick. Looks tasty. <clears throat> Won't need any ice for my drink. It's actually really, really clear. I just got to get some of the uh, ice blocks out of the road. The idea is to kind of, you push them down and then out of the way and they'll just kind of clear yourself a path. It's unseasonably cool lately, so that's why we're, we're dealing with the ice, but uh, I think I'll be able to manage. We'll get some really cool shots underwater because it's super clear over here. This is all spring fed, extremely cold water. As long as my truck doesn't slide into the, into the lake here, we're good. Well, I probably should have done this first is fill my my cubby holes with uh, firewood. I didn't uh, I didn't quite do it. There you go. All right, got firewood on. I've got some ballast for the front, which uh, is a sandbag. Here's my ballast. It's a uh, one of those Walmart bags full of sand. That's I don't want to get a little dirty. Uh oh. I don't want to throw it away yet. All right, got a couple more things to load, and then we'll uh, we'll shove off. Plan B, plan two, we've got a class one icebreaker. I should have brought one along the whole time, but uh, yeah, live and learn. I can now break up the chunks and, uh, and get myself a little bit out further. So I'm gonna break some ice up just so like I can get beyond the shore. There, it's beautiful out here. If I could get, for, I'm very stable, which is cool. Let me see if I can do this on dark. Maybe 
if I could get something that doesn't hurt my knee would help too. There we go, nice and soft. Imagine this is how the Pioneers did it. The outriggers are causing more of a problem than Although they're keeping me floating, so. Just get myself turned around. Slowly getting clearer. My original plan was to go bass fishing out here and uh, I don't think that's gonna happen because, um, well, I can't get deep enough into the water. So I think I'm just gonna make do with what I got. Can't be that bad. Nice relaxing evening on the water anyways. Whether it be frozen or liquid, it's still water. See, it's just like, it's it's still, it's super stable now. Now that we got the outriggers. Like look at, nothing. That uh, bag of sand I put in, uh, split open. So I got half the sand in the bed and half the sand in the bag. But it's gotta be, uh, you just move the ballast around as you uh, as you kind of pivot. But anyways, this wasn't supposed to be a construction zone. It was supposed to be a nice relaxing evening on the water. My hand, look at my hand. It's 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 ice cold. Oh, it's frozen. Can you see? I'm gonna light the mini cubic. Get myself some. Uh, it's about like. It's like three o'clock or something like that. Like the sun goes down like crazy early these days. So I'm gonna make myself uh, an afternoon coffee. Maybe chip some more ice out before I get her, uh, I let her rip. I wanna, I wanna try my motor out. All right, let's get the, uh, we'll get the fire started and, uh, and then it'll nice be warm on this side of the boat while I fish ice cubes out on the other side of the boat. I'm gonna break up a little bit more and then I'm gonna settle in, I think. Because the idea behind this is just to make sure she floats, give her a run for her money, and test it out. I want enough so I can trust the prop out. That's really what I want to do. Fortunately, I have lots of ice to ice my elbow when I'm done. I appreciate your guys' suggestions on how to how to fix that. I've tried a couple of them: the Tiger Bombs and the Liniments and the Rub A535s and the cabbage leaves and stuff. And it seems to actually feels good when I cold cold water. I think the left hand just feels neglected. It's like you never use your left hand, so I might as well, uh, you know, hurt. It's strange how that works like that. Give myself a runway because I want to see this prop. I'm so excited. I want. I'm like ripping this guy. I want to. I want to just. I want to go. I want to go. Just. It's gonna be cool. But I gotta get myself. I don't want to slam into an ice chunk and then. And we're Titanic and yeah. They were fighting. We're fighting. We're fighting camera angles and backlighting and small spaces and ice and a runny nose got my fire my fire rocking I apologize for my camera angle it's just that I got bad bad angle Where's the, the fire stand I can't even rock the boat. Those outriggers, whoever suggested that. Actually, a number of you guys suggested outriggers, so thank you for that. It uh, it definitely improves the uh, stability of this boat tremendously. I'm gonna make coffee. A lot of guys are asking about this little, it's like a mocha espresso maker. This is a Pizzetti. A Pizzetti? Pizzetti. I got it at Homesense. Actually, the wife picked it up at Homesense, and it's great for like a one cup 
coffee maker. You just got to make sure you got this little gasket in there. It doesn't work very well. So you fill it up to right to the edge there. Right about there-ish. Get your coffee grounds. You stick it in this little pot here. Works like an old school coffee maker. It pumps the water up through there. So we put that on the stove. Maybe move some more ice. Because a lot of times what happens is uh, blue herons come and land. Like on the shore where there's a little bit of open water over there, the blue herons will swoop down and they'll go fishing. They'll look for their their dinner for the evening. And there's uh, there's been known to be a bald eagle around here. He's, uh, he's elusive, but uh, you see him sometimes. Life just keeps serving up lemons. Look at that. The bag is not sealed. It's like they missed, they missed crimping it. And it blew up and I have chips everywhere. They still seem to be somewhat okay. But yeah, they missed the heat seal. They're still fresh. So I don't think they're open when I got them. They just weren't sealed. They just got the ever so slight on the edge. What's your favorite one in this party mix bag? I got the Ringolo. They got the, um, the cheese, was it the nacho? These things that used to come in a really, really loud bag. You don't find those anymore. They're really, really loud bag. I don't know why that bag was so loud. I eat these primarily for the pretzels. If they could make a pretzel with a party mix flavor, I would buy that bag. My wife and I are a pretty good match because she doesn't like the pretzels. So she just leaves them in the bowl and I come along and eat the pretzels. So that's how you know you picked the right wife when she leaves you your favorite chunk in your party mix bag. I think I'm gonna get my propeller my propeller all set up while my coffee's still making. So the idea behind this guy is to, uh, these are these are nuts that are going to prevent in case um, the chuck on the drill lets go, I don't lose my propeller. What I did is I actually put a washer there that I can uh, slide it through. Put double nut, you double nut it so you can lock it on and the nut doesn't go away on you. I turn the light on. Can you see the light? It's got a little bit more, more balanced. In order to go forward, you have to run the drill backwards. I think there's different kinds. I'm not a, I'm not an avid boater. I'm sure Zach Fowler over at Fowler's Makery of Mischief in the boating competition could probably tell me all about propellers. I don't know much about them. So what I want to do is tighten that chuck. <laughs> That's reverse. So when you got the drill in forward. <laughs> ah! All right, well, you got to keep it in the water. <laughs> ah. All right, let's try. Let's try and see if we go forward. Holy smokes. I'm gonna smoke it into the, into the we're gonna get a. <laughs> this thing's awesome. <laughs> Look at me go. I think you know what's really great about this thing is if you were like at a. <laughs> you got a buddy, you could just pull up beside him and just soak him. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna probably wreck the propeller. I don't wanna wreck the propeller, I'm gonna hit the ice cubes. Oh, hang on. It actually works better when you when you sink it in the water and you kind of you sink it down.
I think what's happening is, is, is the thread is the, uh, the drill. So I think if it wasn't threaded, it would work a little bit better. <laughs> I think my coffee's ready. Well, well earned coffee. Well, it's a beautiful night for this. There's no wind, there's no snow, there's no rain. It's supposed to go down to about minus, minus one, minus two overnight. She's strong, strong. That thing makes a strong coffee. See how well balanced it is? You got nothing, you got no, no rocking, no rolling, no pitching. I don't even feel ill in this thing. Does anybody like daylight savings time as much as I do? I'm kidding, I don't like daylight savings time. I like when it falls back. So I like this time, but I don't like when, they should just like let it fall back and then leave it. Or the other way around, like to change, like it's like, what is it, four o'clock, five o'clock? And it's like the sun's setting, it's dark. Oh no. All right, some stuff I'm gonna look into to modify that slightly is I'm gonna make it uh, not threaded rod or grind all the threads off of that thing because it pulling and pushing is uh, no fun. And maybe another uh, washer to kind of limit the play, maybe like a slightly wider pull so the rod goes through and then you can pivot a certain amount, but you don't like go right sideways because you don't, I don't think you need to go right sideways, but uh, I think it works really, really well. I've been, messing around with that thing for probably too long probably like 45 minutes i'm still at three bars on a four amp hour battery which is crazy crazy efficient like you could probably zip across a lake no problem like as long as you're going like you're not going full tilt i find with the um with the high torque it seems to be working better with the uh, full rip when it's going super fast it doesn't seem to uh, actually make the boat go any faster it just moves it shoots more water kind of thing. I think it's less it's less efficient. That's why, you know, you got the shipping containers that are just like, just putting away. It wasn't hit nice. I got a special dinner planned. Now I know you guys are like, you guys are, you guys know me for my gourmet cooking. Um, today is going to be no different, no different at all is you go to McDonald's and you order a cheeseburger. But what you do is you order them taken apart, meaning you don't, they don't put them together. So look, I got a bun, but inside the bun, there's nothing because I have a package of patties and I got the cheese and all of the toppings. I personally only like mustard on my cheeseburger. So what you do is you cook the burger at home and you put it together and you get that fresh burger and you can put as many patties on as you want and put as many toppings on as you want, but you get that authentic McDonald's burger. Now, a lot of you guys are gonna be like, those are disgusting. I hate McDonald's. You guys like McDonald's. It's interesting that uh, you never really know how something's gonna work until you try it. Actually, I didn't know how the boat was gonna sit. so. Now I know I can actually put stuff out the back, which gives me a little bit more, a little bit more play. Like I got flip ups at the back, which would give me a little bit more room on here. You can have stuff. Like, I think there's a lot of things that are designed that nobody, like the engineer never tried. He's just like, oh, I guess, I guess that's how we're going to build it. And uh, somebody's going to use it that way. How's the price of propane in your neck of the woods? These things are 10 bucks now, which is crazy. And you got, you got the real fake cheese. You got to get the real, the real cheese from McDonald's. It's got to be the authentic, whatever that is. Flip them and then we're going to put the cheese on it. We're going to let the cheese melt. A lot of the times you get your McDonald's burger, the cheese ain't melted. Ish, it's a little chilly out here. I got, I don't, I don't want no frozen bun. They do look at you funny when you order uh, a burger like taken apart 
you got to explain it to them. Don't don't like go on during rush hour and ask them for like you know to take apart and make it. Like we we ordered twenty one time. <laughs> they didn't. Uh, they were like what? This reminds me of a time when uh, when I was a little kid and my dad would ask me if I wanted to go fishing and uh, my 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 answer to that question was always um, what are we gonna eat? Because I never fished. We always kind of just brought chips and snacks and, and, and crackers and whatnot. And I would sit in the boat and literally eat and eat and eat and eat. Just and, until I got bored of eating. And that's when fishing was over, was <laughs> what I was done eating. So it was always, yes, Kevin, what do you, what do you want to eat? Because then I would go and he would have the, my dad would have the ability to go fishing. Because I didn't like fishing. Sit in the boat. Sit in the boat. I like sitting in the boat. I don't like fishing. Warming them up. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Cheese. Oh, I'm gonna do a double and a single. A big Mac with DLT, a quarter pound of whipped cheese, flat fish, hamburger, a cheeseburger. I don't know. I can't remember the rest of that song. And they always come individually wrapped, which is how convenient. Oh, let's cut that. Can't usually get that that smell on a boat. Oh, fun. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. We're gonna lose it. Okay. We got our cheeseburger. Oh yeah. And then we're gonna do this one. We're gonna do a double, a double and a single, a double cheeseburger. You know what I didn't do? I didn't cook the bacon. Oh, I was gonna make a bacon cheeseburger. No. So excited for the cheeseburgers that I forgot I bought $29 bacon. Oh no. If you guys have never tried to cook and film, you guys should try it. Well, just one time. Just take out your phone and film cooking dinner. There we go. Let that cook up. While that's cooking, I can have my chocolate covered pretzels. Look at those, those are delicious. Can you see those? Mmm. It's amazing I'm not 300 pounds. You gotta try these rolled gold dipped in chocolate. You don't see bacon like that at McDonald's, but we're improvising. That, my friend, is a bacon cheeseburger done the right way. I'm gonna let that sit there for one moment. Sit inside where it's warmer and enjoy my dinner. Got my root beer. What I like about the little tiny cheeseburgers at McDonald's is they've got the bun to patty ratio perfect. So you have a couple bites of your cheeseburger and you eat a chocolate covered pretzel. And you go back and forth. As opposed to sitting here and eating in front of you guys. I will uh I'm gonna finish this and uh, I will catch you back a little later when I actually button up the outside. This is something I couldn't do before was stand up in this boat. I didn't feel safe. I'm gonna take the one layer, the outside layer of pants off. Oh. oh, that's better. Old man sounds. Go from like freezing to like make it tropical in here. When I was pulling the uh, blocks of ice out of the uh, out of the road, I was reminded of a time when I was uh, in Newfoundland, and uh, we stayed at this place called uh, Butler's by the Sea, and uh, it's in, in Bonavista, Newfoundland. And uh, what we would do is I would take Herb and I, Herb Butler, he uh, he has a boat, and we would go out and we would chase icebergs. And I go there. I've been there three times, and I've stayed. He's taken me out every single time I've been there. And I usually stay a week or whatever. And every time there's a berg, I, I tend to chase the bergs and I take pictures of them. And uh, actually, I may have some footage that uh, I can show you right now while I'm talking. But uh, if I could find it. But anyways, so Herb would gather chunks of iceberg. And the reason being is because it's pure water. So, so icebergs aren't salt water. I don't know if you guys know that or not, but it's like pure water. It's like 10,000 years old or whatever. It breaks off and then it floats by Newfoundland 
anyway, so what we would do is he would drive the boat, I would get the gaff, and I grab the ice and haul in the chunks of berg, the bergy bits, and we put them in coolers. And then we take them, basically let them evaporate a little bit, because what would happen is, is the uh, the uh, fresh water would kind of get rid of the salt water that was on it, because the berg itself is fresh water. And then we would take it, and uh, he lets them melt. And then what he does is actually pours them into these little little baggies that make little ice cubes. And uh, then he can have iceberg water all year long. And uh, I still have some from my trip. To Newfoundland. I was going to bring some, but then I forgot. Anyways, if you ever have the opportunity to try iceberg ice, it's almost like it cleans your mouth. It's it's a weird, it's a weird uh, flavor or even like a like an experience. You, you know, like if you have a, like a rum and coke or, or like a whiskey on the rocks, and then you have the ice from an iceberg. It's it's next level. You have to try it. And uh, the other thing they would do with the iceberg water was they make coffee and tea. And what I noticed with the coffee made with iceberg water is that it didn't it didn't make your teeth feel funny at the end, like almost like a like a film or something like that. It was like pure, like it didn't have any aftertaste. It was just like just sharp. Like, anyways, try iceberg water if you can while the iceberg still exists. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it, pff, yeah, it, it's it's something you have to experience at some point in your life is to go. Uh, either A, eat icebergs, or B, you know, just to see icebergs. They're very cool. I, I've i gone many times, and I just like, I, I, I like the people. I like touring around Newfoundland, and I like actually going and, and uh, like, asking the guys down at the wharf. You guys want to go check out that iceberg? You know, you toss them whatever they want, you know, if they're asking for whatever whatever amount. You know what? It's worth it. And uh, you can also charter, like, there's, like, iceberg tours and whale watching tours and stuff like that. I try to go off the beaten path and ask, you know, local guy if he wants to go out and make a couple of bucks. Let's get nice and toasty in here. So my original plan was to uh, actually watch a movie, but uh, I can't, I have no Wi-Fi out here. So I got my, uh, I got my, just whatever's on my phone. This is summertime. We got bean. Bean on a floaty. And Lena. You guys ever seen these uh, these projectors? You can project whatever's on your phone onto the wall. I got uh, around the ceiling. Look at we can see that. There's Duck Norris and an auto flips it's kind of cool this is actually old technology this is a uh, Motorola Z2 play with the uh, moto mods on the back and never really took off which is unfortunate because the moto mod Motorola's phone I like them but it's what's really cool is it basically turns anything you have into uh, a TV so you can, you can project it on the wall and it works really good in the snow outside you can project it on the snow like even from like the second floor you can project it down into your backyard and it's it's really neat um <clears throat> yeah that was the plan <laughs> the plan tonight uh got slightly modified it uh it was gonna be movies and boat time but now it's a trip down memory lane with my phone and every picture i've ever taken apparently whatever's on the uh, the memory card because i've got uh this is an old phone and I got my new phone. So whatever's kind of like a little time capsule. It's actually kind of cool. I never really throw, I never really throw out anything, but I never, I really don't ever throw out phones because, uh, yeah, you never know when, when, you know, those pictures that you have, if you haven't backed them up, take to today to back up your photos. Cause if you lose them, you're not gonna, it's not gonna be a good day. Printing photos are a thing of the past. Now people just kind of hoard stuff, but you should print them. You should print them. You should back them up. Do it because you never know. Those pictures that you thought you were going to have forever may just disappear. I got pictures of Duck Norris on here, which is the original duck. The ducks I had and just bobbing around. It's actually quite, it's quite comfy. It's nice and toasty. My, to my feet, my feet are thawed out. 
I got them actually up on the on the cubic mini stove. I guess the uh, I got it dampened down. You can see the cubic. It's nice and nice and warm. These are like dirt cheap, and they just they make the space right. Like you can you can go cool light, or like you know if you want to go like say you're doing red light district. So you want it to be nice and yeah. You just change the color. Adds the mood to any any room. Dim it down, brighten her up. Tray ceilings, that's where it's at. Well, I got the fireplace loaded. Just waiting for it to uh, charcoal and I'll dampen it down for the evening. It's pretty much where I got my remote, my remote off. I guess I'll get you guys in the morning. You guys won't have to wait long. We get to, I just like blink and you guys are here in the morning. Well, good morning. I'm still drifting. <laughs> I didn't, uh, I didn't wake up in the, uh, in the drink. That's good. I didn't capsize, didn't fill up with water. The boat held good. We haven't flipped it yet. It's not freezing. It's actually quite warm. I don't even know what the temperature is outside. I wonder if the ice froze. It probably froze a little bit. Pre-made it last night so I can, uh, just put it on. This little the little wood storage down below is quite convenient. Maybe we'll open the damper. Maybe it didn't get as cold last night. You can see there's a little bit of ice forming ever so slightly around the blocks of ice. That's good. I don't have to break myself out. Hope you guys are having a coffee at home. A lot of the times I do uh, maple syrup in the coffee. That's the stuff I make in the spring and actually adds a nice like gentle flavor to it. Those are soft too, so it's actually like you can just kinda like it, it. It's small, but you can put your feet up. You can stretch yourself out. I wonder what rules and regulations there are about uh, like camping up north. Like you go to those really rich cottage country kind of places and what if you had like parked your little houseboat in front of one of those you know McMansions on the on the water and, and you just decided to live there like what's stopping you like you can't nobody owns the waterways right like like I know you have a troubles finding a place to put your your you know your van because everybody owns the land, but nobody owns the water in Canada. So I wonder if you could just plop your boat in anywhere and just kind of moor it. Get like a barge, like just an ugly, ugly, ugly barge and just park it right in front of like one of those $10 million estates and, uh, <laughs> and live there. Like I just have enough food, you know, solar panels for your power, you know, like filtration for your water, pull it right out of the lake. And uh, just so you don't get in trouble, have like a little septic tank on board. And, uh, and yeah, it, it basically hold out until the people that own the McMansions like buy you a house or something <laughs> to get, so they don't have to look at you out, uh, out front of their McMansions. I think that would be cool. <laughs> that's something if, uh, yeah, if I was really bored, that's what I would, uh, that's what I would do. <laughs> One summer, just this camp on a barge. It's just as insulated as, as the ball. Like it's crazy on, on how warm it stays. It's cause it's, I think cause it's sealed. I actually got a, uh, an electric winch. Actually I've had it for a while. I picked it up at Princess Auto, it was on sale a while ago and I was thinking to myself, when do I gonna ever use this thing? But it was too good of a deal to pass up. So I picked it up and uh, now I've got it rigged up to a, um, an old John Deere uh, 12 volt battery. Uh, so it should just kind of float in and then just pull it up should be should be that easy but uh if anything can go wrong it will go wrong i have to get this thing out of the water so i got that thing rigged up Hang it across the little doohickeys hook it onto the boat and just yank if you watch the whole video put full stop in the comments because i want to know the people that watch the entire video i know a lot of people skip to the end and uh and you know don't watch the middle or whatever i think uh but yeah the people the, the people that are like you know the full subscriber fans that watch the entire video that really helps the algorithm the algorithm likes that you watch the entire video so uh 
yeah put full stop in the in the in the comments i think that's something that my brother did on the wooded beardsman's channel if you watch the entire video of his uh you put full stop in the end i want you to put full stop on the end if you guys watch the entire video just to see who who does it but yeah if uh i hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh i hope you join me on the next one cheers enjoy your coffee